Aloha, and welcome to another episode of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Lily Williams, and we'll be co-hosting today with our Savvy Chicks founder, Chantel Saville, who is currently in Sydney, Australia, coming live from, to us from the Inspiring Rare Birds office. Our topic today, why get a job when you can create your own business? Our guests are Joe Bernston, top Australian entrepreneur, founder and CEO of Inspiring Rare Birds, and author of Brilliant Business Kids, and her colleague, Sarah Cole, community leader at Rare Birds. The entrepreneurial movement, Inspiring Rare Birds, works to promote opportunity for women in entrepreneurship and has a global vision to inspire one million more women entrepreneurs globally by 2020. We're really excited to have these inspiring ladies on the Savvy Chicks show today. Welcome to the show, Chantel, or Joe and Sarah. And hi, Chantel. Good morning. <laughs> hi. Thanks so much, Lily. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> We're here in cold Sydney, Australia. It's uh, it's nothing like Hawaii at the moment. It's twenty here, and very excited though to be here at seven a.m. to introduce these wonderful and inspiring women. Um, with Rare Birds, it's, it's an organization that I've been inspired by for quite some time now, and I just really wanted to share some of Joe's inspiration and advice with you all. So, firstly, I'd love to congratulate her on. A huge achievement. This week she's launching the Forensics Academy as well, along with her Inspiring Rare Birds Ambassador Program, which we'll talk about in the second segment. Firstly though, congratulations on the Academy. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And we look forward to hearing more shortly. With this uh, Savvy Chicks, you're going to love this episode. Please stay tuned the whole episode. If you don't get to watch the whole episode, watch the replay on the Savvy Chicks website. And it's going to help you be inspired and empowered to live your dreams to believe they're possible, to hear examples of other people your age who are actually out there creating amazing, successful businesses, and who better to tell the story than Joe, the founder herself. So um, welcome and tell us, how can you start a business without having much you know, capital or resources or anything at all like that? Well, why, why can't you? That's the question <laughs> I ask. And if you look at young people, look at kids, um, they don't see barriers to participation. They don't think that they need a lot of money. They don't think they need a lot of stuff to do things. And if you look at how a young person thinks in particular, they see the result first. They see exactly what they want to be able to do, and then they just go and do it. They don't think, well, why can't I do it? Or I don't have enough money. Also, when we talk about resources and tools, we don't necessarily need to have money. I can have push by, and I can have a community and I can have friends who can help me and I've got, I've got resources. So it's not necessarily monetary resources. I also think that um, there's a really important question to ask people and that is not what do you want to be when you get older, it's who do you want to become as you grow. So you don't necessarily have to be aiming towards a job title. You could be aiming towards your passion and then your passion can turn into something you're interested in building and then business simply becomes a vehicle to get you there. And I just find that so incredible. And if you talk to a lot of adults, they'll tell you that that's not possible. That you can't actually make a living from your passion and you have to do this exact thing. Well, we Wait till you're 16. Yeah. I don't mean we do, but that's why we're the adults we want you to look towards. <laughs> they do, though, you know, and especially parents, and it can be quite challenging for young people because their parents are saying, Wait till you're 16, get a job at the exact local shop or McDonald's. Uh, wait till you graduate, study something that's going to get you a good job, yeah. Yeah. and that then you're following that route, which might not suit you. Well, when I was younger, the, the script in my head, which was given to me by my parents, it was given to me by years, and that was um, go to school, get a job, um, then buy a house, get married, have two kids, <laughs> two dogs, two cars, in ground swimming pool, and then you're going to be happy. And I actually didn't find that was the route to happiness. The route to happiness to me was being creative, was crafting every single day that I allowed it to look, and living with purpose, and living with exactly what I wanted to do every day. So our mission really is to change how young girls think, and to let them see that they don't have to climb a ladder to get to a job. They don't have to get into a big building and climb the floors to be the boss. They can actually be the boss for themselves right now. And as young as, I mean, some of the entrepreneurs in your book are as young as eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, they're purpose driven, they've got social enterprises, they're commercial businesses. So, what they look at is really who they want to become and what their passion is versus um, what do I really need or what don't I have that's going to stop me from getting there. 
So Poppy Star is an amazing example. She's a young Australian skateboarder and she wanted to travel to the US and compete internationally because that's her passion, skateboarding is her passion. What she knew she had to do was find the money to get there and compete because her parents couldn't do it. So she built a website, she's, she's also an artist and she sells her own art online. And she used the funding from creating her own art and selling it on her website to fund her tickets to the US. And she's now an international champion in skateboarding. And she's 14. And she's 14. <laughs> and that, that. and that, just, that just really shows you that business is just the vehicle to her passion. Business is not the thing that you do, it's the way you do it. And so for someone like Poppy, she sounds very creative. So mm. often creatives in business, they don't tend to be on the same kind of wavelength. I mean, they can be. So what's your best advice for for someone like a Poppy who might be watching this today, who's more creative, perhaps like making jewelry or something like that, but needs a business for a vehicle to do that? The truth is that the creative profession at the moment is highly in demand. So anyone that is creative and thinking about all the savvy chicks, there is a huge amount of opportunity for you. There is not enough creative at the moment. <laughs> so anyone that's in design or anyone that's in digital or anyone that has a flair for creativity, there is a huge amount of work available. And the reason is that over the years we've suppressed creativity and we've told that we need to be practical and we need to think, we need to think logical, but really the creativity is the innovation. And that's why entrepreneurship and creativity and innovation all work really well together. You can't have entrepreneurship without creativity. The other thing is I'd say always stay curious. Always ask the questions that you're thinking about asking and don't hold back. If someone says at the end of someone speaking who's got questions, put your hand up and ask the question that's in your head because you don't want to walk away and regret actually not asking. You might never see that person again. So one of the rules that I always have is when I go and see speakers and I speak a lot myself, I chase the speaker everywhere I need to, <laughs> <laughs> to get to them to ask the questions that I want to ask because they're on a plane, you know, five hours time, I might never see them again. So I want to know what's in their head and I want to pick and pack everything I can and I feel really confident, confident about doing that because we're equals. It's mm -hmm. another human and they've got knowledge I don't. And this is why it's so important for all the savvy chicks watching this to realise that everyone's unique. My skill sets from Joe's and Sarah's are all completely unique, but if you combine them and you work together and you ask one another questions or how you can collaborate and work together, before you know it, you're all doing what you love with people that inspire you as much as you, you know, the things that you enjoy. So yeah. I really want to quickly say, speaking of inspiration, speakers and planes, for anyone who's seen the TEDx talk, Joe was actually on a Qantas plane doing a TEDx talk from Sydney, Australia to Los Angeles. So, I mean, she must have followed enough speakers to speak so well <laughs> to get asked to do that. Well, I guess that works. It was a great talk and it was definitely for girls and the topic of was there's a lot of money to be made taking the entrepreneur seriously. And I wanted to share with the world that we should be taking them seriously. You are really talented and you're really talented. And uh, if you really notice what we're doing and how we're doing, we're actually very good at it. And if you invest in us, it's probably a really good chance that you're going to get a good return. Especially when it's people who are absolutely passionate and live and breathe what they do because it's who they are. And I mean, that's, that's who you are that's watching. What I also want to ask is for those watching that don't know perhaps what their passion is, mm -hmm. in order to think of a business or to think of what you have to pursue, even as young as 12, 14, 16, 20, what would be your best advice for that? I always ask young people and girls, um, when you wake up in the morning, what makes you really happy? Because there's probably an indicator there of what you want to do that day. It's as simple as that. And so if you wake up in the morning and say, the first thing I really love doing is walking my dog, well, perhaps there's something around pets or there's something around dog ownership. If you wake up and you go, you know what, the first thing I like to do in the morning is go for a surf. Perhaps there's something around surfing. It doesn't necessarily mean to be the sport of surfing. It could be the business of surfing. It could be as a, a manager of a surfer. It could be an administrator of you know, an organisation that runs competitions. So it's really about when you wake up every morning, what makes your heart sing? and what gets you out of bed. And that kind of starts your passion. That's where it really is. And what you like to talk about, I think, or if you wake up and love to get excited to start your off prep, even though in Australia they actually have to wear uniforms. So in Hawaii, you guys are a little bit more lucky that you get to choose what you wear to school because 
here in Australia, everyone gets to wear the same thing, so your only chance to be creative, I guess, is maybe with your ponytail or your. <laughs> As long as you're passionate about something, you'll find a way to to use that in a way that will take you somewhere else. So the, the advice from me is don't be afraid to talk about what you love. And you don't need to fit in with other people. You can fit in with yourself and you can carve your own pathway and you can be your own queen of your own castle. And that means just talking about what you love doing. And it doesn't matter what it is. And if people judge it, it doesn't matter because it's your life and you're going to take it somewhere. And they're probably not the people that you're going to collaborate with anyway, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can find out quicker and then you can move on and then spend time with people that you are like minded with. Um, what you also, the idea of pursuing a business is how it feels in a job. What do you think, you know, what do you think of the benefits of actually pursuing a business rather than going to get a job at a young age are? I think, you know, the reality is that you can do both. Okay. You can do both at the same time. So you can work part time to earn money mm -hmm. to pursue other things and go out and, and buy things that you want and have you know parts of the lifestyle that you want. But why can't you do them at the same time? You know, I could learn to have a little business on the side of my job. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing that, you're learning skills while you're working. You know, you're service, you're learning how to treat people, you're learning how to get places on time, you're learning how to work hard to pay. At the same time, on the sideline, you could be thinking about your little business, and there's no reason you can't do it at the same time. There's that is some time. great advice, Joe. We're going to take a quick break and be right back with you, ladies. Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, host of Sustainable Hawaii. Thanks for watching Think Tech this summer. We have a lot of terrific shows of great importance, and I hope you'll watch my show too every Tuesday at noon as we address sustainability issues for Hawaii. They're really pertinent as the World Conservation Congress approaches in September and the World Youth Congress that's focusing on sustainability next year as well. Have a great summer and tune in at noon every Tuesday. Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I am a new host for the show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you how to get the smart edge in life. We're gonna have awesome guests in the military, business, political, nonprofit world. So no matter what background you're from, we have something for you. Please join us every other Thursday at 10 a.m. at thinktechhawaii.com or on theartofthinkingsmart.com. I look forward to seeing you. Aloha and welcome back to the Savvy Chick Show. Chantel is coming to us live from Sydney with the inspiring Rare Birds team. Founder and CEO Joe Bernstein and community leader Sarah Cowell. Our topic today, why get a job when you can create your own business? Take it away, ladies. Thanks, Lily. We're just, uh, we're just finishing off a conversation about whether you should have a job or start a business and what the benefits are. And as Joe was just saying, you can actually do both. And they can work in nicely together. And, you know, really, if you're focused and inspired by things, you can do a lot. And you actually, you don't get as tired because you're alive with inspiration. So if you want to finish that off, yeah, I think when you're, when you're, the younger you are starting to learn the skills of business, and business is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets, and the more resilient it becomes, and the less fearful it becomes of going new places. So while you're uh, practicing in your little business, and you're 12 years old, can you imagine what kind of business person you're going to be when you're 20? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm so inspired by and it's incredible because you don't only talk the talk, you've actually launched an academy that's going to help these young people really bring these business visions to fruition and it's awesome. So please yeah. tell us about this academy you just launched today. Yeah, we've just launched <laughs> this academy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the program is called Startup.Business and we've aimed it at 12 to 17 year olds and it's not teaching business fundamentals. We're teaching how to think like an entrepreneur. So the cycle of learning is really, really, really simple. And it's ask, try, do, reflect. So you ask questions, you find people to ask the right questions of, you try things because you've got to be brave and you've got to go out into the real world and try things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you find out what works and you do them. Once you do them, you start to reflect. And the online program is blended. So you can connect with other girls on the program that are in it. And you can help each other solve your problems in that journey. So it's highly socialized, but at the end of the 12 weeks, you'll end up with your vision, your mission, 
what the markets look like, how to monetize your business, and a full business plan to get going with. So you're actually learning in action, you're learning while you're doing it. And, and what's even more exciting is it's online, so Hawaii, we can have this for our students in schools in Hawaii, it's absolutely incredible. I'm sure that the Rare Birds website will be coming up throughout this episode, so please do contact if you'd like this at your school or if you're a teacher watching this, because it is next level. And I mean, for myself, the two things I learned in school that really helped on my entrepreneur journey was uh, going up through drama, as well as learning resilience and getting used to rejection, which as an entrepreneur, you do face quite a lot, but I always face it with a smile. Okay, maybe not now, <laughs> next time. So, so I always say that no one was ever born playing the violin. Right? So no one just starts out doing something great. So just like that entrepreneurship, you've got to try things. You've got to fall over and you've got to make mistakes. And I don't think the word failing comes into it because we're just continuously learning. Mm -hmm. And so if you put it down for a while, you put the violin down for a while, you come back to it, that's okay as well. You know, you do as much as you want to do. But there is no failing. There is only trying and doing and learning. It's interesting you say that because one time a friend said to me, she goes, oh, no, because you've never had a real big failure. You can't, um, you'll let, you know, you didn't hit the bottom to go to the top. And I said, you know, I haven't really failed. But it only occurred to me. I would failed so many times, but I didn't ever see them as failures. So I was trying to recollect. You know, when you don't look at it as a failure and you look at it as progression, what you learn and who did you meet and what did I take from that, you actually can grow a lot stronger and go towards more of a direction that's, True to you. I think the more mistakes you learn, obviously you don't set out to make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. But the more things that you have to make decisions about, the better you become actually making decisions. So you, sit, you, you approach decision making a little bit differently. And that creativity, problem solving, the logic that you use becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And as it becomes stronger, you feel good about yourself and you become more confident doing it. And confidence and confidence is the key, and that's how great entrepreneurs become great leaders, because they can stand in front of a group of people and take them on their journey and their vision, and be absolutely resoundingly clear on that journey, because they've made all the decisions to get there. And speaking of visions and missions, let's get into the Rare Birds and the vision and mission of Inspiring Rare Birds and where you hope to go. and. The ambassador program, which I'm very excited to be an ambassador representing Hawaii. Yay! Absolutely. Yay. So excited. <laughs> well, yeah, our vision and our mission are amazing. So um, we want every woman to have the, have the opportunity to become an entrepreneur by choice, whatever age they are, whatever they are in the world. And as you said, we want to have a million women entrepreneurs by 2020, and we're well on our way. Um, and we have an amazing community already of these inspiring rare birds throughout Australia and globally, like you've done, Chantel, who are, who are ready to um, become the best people they can be and to fly the flag for Rare Birds. So we have an amazing ambassador program, a global ambassador program, where we're placing high caliber individuals and amazing entrepreneurs, amazing business people all around the world to, be, to fly the flag for Rare Birds and to be our advocates and to grow the Rare Birds community in their local region. So we're going to have Rare Birds all around the world, growing and inspiring young women, inspiring young girls to, to go out there and start their businesses or to help them grow their businesses. And so we can expect to see events and Absolutely. popping up everywhere, the yes. launching this week as well? Yes, so they're starting right now in Australia. We're going all around the country with our launch events. Um, we're going to be introducing our local ambassadors to their home communities. And then they're going to start running events in their local regions to help help you face the challenges and to you know, solve the problems in your business in the day to day and to help connect the communities and to connect the people in their community with people who will be able to help them and help them grow their businesses. And there will be a schedule on the Rare Birds website to know when the next events are. Yeah. There will be a schedule. It's also around um, getting people to feel safe and comfortable with other people that think the same way that they do. Mm -hmm. And so being in your own little business or being an entrepreneur doesn't mean you, you need to be on your own because it can be quite lonely. So if we put you know, a group of Rare Birds around you and you feel confident and safe in that environment, can you imagine how you're going to flourish in your business? And being on your own as an entrepreneur is quite challenging. I mean, I took a leap of faith out of the corporate world where I had a great job and everything, and then to try to start something that I was the only one could understand. It wasn't until I met other entrepreneurs that I actually was like, well, oh, I'm not so crazy. <laughs> and it's like what you say about collaboration, Chantelle, especially when you're young, up and come up, 
entrepreneur or you've got a great idea and you're creative and you want to do something with it, but you think, oh, I haven't got the business skills. Well, that's where you collaborate with your friends or your family or someone at school or someone who has the skills that you may not necessarily have yet. And that's where the beauty of collaboration comes in for entrepreneurship because um, we can't do it on our own. So we surround ourselves with an amazing support team, whoever they are, um, to help us to achieve our goals. And to give you an idea of the goals you can achieve, can you share some real big career highlights that perhaps girls can relate to and go, wow, that's something I'd really love to yeah. aspire to? I think one of the big things for me was when I started out, I really didn't know anything about anything. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone? <laughs> and I was all a little bit of a missing journey. But because I didn't know, it made me feel it. It didn't make me have fear. It made me the opposite. Because I was so naive. I didn't know when the brick walls were coming. <laughs> so even though I hit them along the journey, I didn't see them coming. So I didn't think about them so much. So not knowing what you don't know should actually help you become fearless. Because you're not thinking about things that possibly could happen. I think the most, you know, the huge milestones for us in the, in the business at the moment and for me personally on my journey is I really switched from growing a company that was about just making money and transactional processes to having a business that was very purpose driven. Mm -hmm. So my heart and my head became really connected with each other and we call that having a profitable smart heart at Red Birds. And so we use our heart to lead and we use mm -hmm. our head to, to do the commercial side of the business. That's, that's perfect advice, actually, because mm -hmm. when they're not together, it's you're going one way or the other. Yeah. You actually really need to align them in order it's to. It's really hard. And I think when you're really ambitious, it becomes that underlying thread and that stream of purpose. You know, everything becomes fulfilling mm -hmm. versus just, you know, just aiming towards the power of house. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible how society is almost taught or trained the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, and you forget to enjoy your cup of tea or yeah. waking yeah. up in the morning and, and just doing the simple things in life because you're so consumed by the next thing, but when it's purpose-driven, you feel fulfilled along the journey, and that's a completely different every day matters. feeling. Every day matters, and every day feels warm inside. I don't know how yeah. else to explain it, but it's not this empty, elusive trying to catch on to something. So that is so important. Your passion, girls, and you know, as we're discussing, mm -hmm. Joe's you know, proof that it's possible. Sarah is also proof it's possible. Getting up, doing what you love, surrounding yourself with like-minded people. So anyone who's watching, if people around you are saying it's not possible, just remember that we are proof it is and have yes, it and yes, it's fine <laughs> where birds are. Can you share any, really <coughs> just your general wisdom for savvy chicks wanting to pursue the passion? Uh, start today. So if you have an idea in your mind, you must write that down today and start to think about the questions that you need to ask someone who has the answers to find that question to start the new step. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult to do anything with an idea. It's only possible to do something once you talk to somebody about your idea. So share liberally what you're thinking about and listen to the feedback that you're getting from people about what they would buy, what they wouldn't buy, what they think about your product. And just use that as your research to start to get to the next stage of possibly thinking about how the business actually looks. But if you don't start today, when are you going to start? Mm -hmm. And I love that you say ask the question because often we don't have the right question to ask. And if we're not sure of the question to ask, so I think that's, I guess, really when you go deep down and think, what do I really need for the next step? Would that be yeah. how you sort of... So I'll give an example, so just to give you some practical wisdom around this. And that is that if I woke up this morning and I said, you know, the thing I love to do the most is walk my dog. And I started to feel passionately about, you know, I could probably walk other people's dogs as well in the morning and I could get paid for that. So I don't know if that's going to work until I ask somebody else that has a dog that's walking them and I... Maybe talk to them about how what the hours are that they work and how they fit everything into their day and would it be convenient for them if I walk the dog for you every morning? And if they said, Well look, we've actually given me a few hours of the day that we didn't have before, you could probably then ask the next person, Well, if I could walk the dog for you, would you pay me for it? And it's just basic simple questions <laughs> to get to the answers that you're actually looking for. So rather than just thinking about them, you're actually putting them out there. Now, they might say, no, I don't want to, or that's not for me, but that doesn't matter. Because it might be tomorrow you're thinking about surfing, so you're asking questions about that. And then, if you're, you know, coming up with challenges, I might, before we have a few minutes, can you just let us know maybe a challenge or some challenges you face? I know you said you fit brick walls, but mm -hmm. how do you get through those? Uh, mm -hmm. What mindset did it take to get through that? I think every day that I'm really lucky to wake up breathing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, I don't want to waste that time. 
and it means that if I have 24 hours in a day, I really don't want to be upset with it. I want to be happy with it and fulfilled with it. And that means I have to change my mind set very quickly to turn it around and become the person I want to be every day. So I don't want to sit around miserable. I don't want to infect other people's lives with misery. <laughs> and I want to actually create impact and have a purpose behind that. So for me, it's around flicking the switch and going, come on, snap out of this, get up. You've got an amazing job. You work with amazing people. Let's do this. And then for girls who are in school and are surrounded by perhaps negativity or not feeling good about themselves, how can they just get through that to, to go on and get on with the business they're doing or the sport or whatever it is that they're doing? It's about finding your tribe. It's about finding the girls that you love and you trust mm -hmm. and you want to be around that make you feel good. And the other ones that don't do that, you don't need to be around them. That's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. so true. And I mean, even if you have one friend, that's enough. And even if you don't, then find something that inspires you until one comes along. Because I think often other girls are also not being true to themselves or who they're, they are because they're trying to find themselves. And that's when negativity can be created and bullying and all this type of thing. So if you stay true to yourself and your values and don't let that impact you, that's... Yeah. And I think, you know, just always lead with kind, kind to people because it's really simple and it's really easy. And that will reflect on you as a person and it will reflect on the people around you and how they treat you as well. Okay, thank you so much, ladies. That's so inspiring, and I know I learned a lot, and I'm sure all of our savvy chicks out there did as well. Um, we will be coming live next week, same time, Wednesday, 11 a.m., Honolulu time. And just thank you again, ladies. Thank you so much, Joe, Sarah, and we'll see you again next week, Chantel. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you, Lily. Just remember, she can, I can. Awesome.